got a couple of quick hitting questions I'm going to throw at Caleb because he says it's a disappointment if uh, Nico doesn't win the Heisman next year, which is a little crazy to me, but that's all right. Uh, Nico did not get any sort of odds uh, as far as the early Heisman contenders by ESPN. Is that crazy, Caleb? They did all returning players, to be fair. I don't care. It's still crazy. Nico should be getting odds. Um, to get this out of the way, because I know you had a Heisman vote, congratulations to Jane Daniels. That was a well-deserved Heisman. I don't care that LSU went 9-3. and three. Jane Daniels was the best player in football this year, and you can't tell me otherwise. Um, I agree. And I went, <clears throat> by the way, just uh, for those that were wondering, if, if you were, my Heisman vote was exactly the way it turned out. So I thought it was one of the easiest years. I usually spend a couple of hours really looking at players. It didn't take me nearly that long when I sent my vote in. I thought it was kind of a blah year in the Heisman race, to be real honest with you. And I want to ask you this. Was Hendon Hooker a year too early? I mean, is he going to New York with this group, even with the injuries? And if he's healthy last year, I don't think he wins the award. I think he goes to New York as a finalist. But this year, if he's healthy and he puts up the season like he did in 2022, I think he's the runaway winner. I know you like Jaden Daniels. I do too. But among the group that I saw and with what Hooker did last year, if he had that year in 2023, ifs and buts, candies and nuts, I think he wins the Heisman. Still hard for me to say it would have been better than Jaden Daniels. Now, I know y'all think I'm an LSU homer, but those stats that Jaden Daniels put up were just insane. They were so gaudy. I just couldn't ignore them. Um, and so it's I, – I think he'd finish second to Jaden Daniels, quite honestly, um, because Jaden Daniels' stats are just so insane. But don't worry, because Nico Iamaliava will have better stats than both of them combined next year. <laughs> He's going to combine what they did, Dave, and that'll be his numbers. I'm kidding. That's not my prediction. But Nico is going to blow you away with the same stat line next year. Book it. Book it. Find where you can get the odds now. If you have to fly to Vegas to write in Nico Iamaliava as a Heisman contender somewhere, do it. It's worth the money that you'll win. Let me ask you this. There was one guy. His name's Michael uh, uh, Penix that Tennessee had ties to. If Michael Penix is Tennessee's quarterback, how substantially better is their record this year? How substantially better is their season? And give us, get those that don't know, give us a background on the, the tie to Tennessee. So this was Pruitt. Michael Penix was committed, funny enough, with Adrian Martinez. Both of them were committed to Tennessee. Butch Jones signed them. Pruitt came in, took over, basically nudged both out to the transfer portal, said they don't fit a system, went for Keller Christ as a transfer and JT Shrout and then decided that he has a crush on Jared Garantano and decided to start him the whole time he was at Tennessee. Um, I think, look, Dave, I don't think Michael Penix would have stayed at Tennessee had he stayed with Pruitt because I think he still wouldn't have worked out because I think there were so many other issues that Michael Penix wouldn't have worked out at Tennessee. So he would have hit the portal anyway. Part of why he worked out at Washington, and I'm just going to say this about Penix. I like Penix, but he played with a lot of help, and he played a lot of limited competition. He wasn't that great if you watch him this year. Um, and I, I thought he's better, better than Joe Milton. I know yes, the, so the I think Joe if Milton Michael Penix is, I think if Michael Penix is at Tennessee this year, maybe they, I think they beat Florida. Um, because I think that, that you don't have, even though Cooper Mays isn't there. There were some basic miscommunication things that no quarterback should have. The two timeouts on the first drive of the second half, you just can't have that. And so I don't well, think the, Penix can... I think also with a veteran quarterback, and I know Milton's a veteran quarterback, but we've talked about, and I don't want to just turn this into Milton bashing, how he doesn't process quickly. I think they stand a much better chance in Missouri. I know that was one-sided, but I don't think Tennessee adapted well. And if you have a, a guy who's – who's a better quarterback, you're able to adapt to what Missouri threw out there defensively, which was a totally new defense that Tennessee hadn't seen. So I'm not I'm not ruling out that they're in that game or win that game with substantially better quarterback play and leadership. I mean, leadership on the field, not leadership off the field, okay? Uh, I think that's a possibility. Probably not beating 
Georgia, no matter what, do they put up a couple of more red zone points against Alabama in the first half? And it makes it more difficult for Alabama to come back. I don't know if it, I think that it makes it more difficult, but I think at halftime, Tennessee was a victim of circumstance. I think that's when Nick Saban said that Jalen Milrow guy can run. So I'm going to, I'm going to call some called runs for him. I thought that was, that was the moment halftime at the Tennessee game where Alabama changed their philosophy on how much to run Milrow. And that's why they're going to be uh, with a, that's why they're going to be in the college football playoff at potential. And that's why Nick Saban should be coach of the year because he was the offensive and defensive coordinators of Alabama this year. And it was his, it was him the whole time. That's, it was incredible what he did, but yeah, I, I agree. I think, look, I, I know people keep disagreeing with me on this. I don't think there's any scenario in which Tennessee beats Alabama this year. I know they y'all are really wide eyed by what happened in the first half as if Alabama couldn't have put on. Oh, you mean that? Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you meant this upcoming year. All right. In, in no, this past, yeah. Yeah. Dave, I know it was only 34 to 20. If Nick Saban wanted to, he could have hung three more touchdowns on Tennessee in the second half. Yeah, but what was the halftime score again? It was 20 to 7. Okay, so let's just say Tennessee gets two, two more touchdowns, touchdowns in, instead and of it's two 28 to 7. Okay, Alabama still wins 34 to 28. And I also, again, Nick Saban left about two touchdowns on the field in that game. Y'all, Tennessee wasn't in Alabama's class talent wise. And Nick, I had to, I always thought Nick Saban uh, in game coaching was a little bit overrated. I had to change that after watching him this year. His that, he was superb. He was flawless this year. I I I, I think Tennessee could have been up forty to seven and would have lost that game with how Alabama played in the second half. Mm, I don't know. I th I think then you don't go to the Jalen Milrow running the football because you're worried about clock a little bit more. I think Tennessee wins that game if they squeeze eight more points out of that first half. I really do. Brought to you by Harold Group Security Solutions, leadership experience specialization. I hate to say it, but we've seen another incident. Uh, workplace and school violence, another couple just recently. Well, Harold Group Security Solutions will take care of that with former military personnel that are highly trained to protect your workspace or your children's school. Your children's school. We're in private schools now. I want to be in public schools as well. So go to your school administrator and say, you have to look up Harold Group Security Solutions. They just happen to be based in East Tennessee. You're so blessed and fortunate they're there, haroldgrp.com. You can click click right down below. But Harold Group Security Solutions, making your children and making your work safe special. And we all know how important that is to avoid the tragedies that we have seen in the past. Uh, I, when, when, when I look at this past season and that Alabama game at halftime, I still wonder uh, to this day, if in that half, which is roughly 20 minutes, if that if that half, if Nick Saban makes the decision to run Jalen Milrow as much, um, and if not, if they make the college football playoff, I'm going to say no to both. I think that he's got to throw the ball to overcome a bigger deficit. He doesn't discover or he doesn't utilize Jalen Milrow as an elite runner and Alabama doesn't make the college football playoff. I think it was that impactful on the entire season. I think 28 to 7 he still might do it though. I could be wrong on that, but you you don't you don't give up the running game with a three-score deficit to start the second half. I think more than that maybe, but I think three scores is still manageable in the second half and Nick Saban knew he was going to shut down Tennessee. Look, Alabama Y'all keep acting like it was a 20 to seven lead that Alabama didn't give Tennessee with two bad turnovers in the first half. Okay. So I, I, I have, I'm sorry. They weren't in the same class. Alabama knew that if they didn't turn the ball over, they were going to be fine. And y'all I'm seeing on the message board. I'm being called an Alabama Homer. I was called an LSU Homer at the start of the year. I must root for every team that is not Tennessee, according to you guys. Okay. Because I'm a Homer of like what? Five different teams now, Dave, at this point. And you know, I don't know. He's wearing I mean, green. I picked Ohio maybe State. He's, I maybe he's Ohio a Notre State Dame guy. Are you a Notre yeah. Dame guy? Yeah, you're right. I'm a Notre Dame guy. I also picked Ohio State to win it all. What's wrong? Am I, am I an Ohio State homer? You guys are ridiculous, okay? If if I don't sit there and say, if am I a homer of another team because I don't sit there and say, well, Tennessee is the greatest team in history and would blow that team out by 40, all of a sudden I'm a homer of that other team. Okay. 
I don't think Tennessee beats Alabama, regardless of who's quarterback, regardless of what's happening, because you're forgetting that 20 to 7 lead. I think with any other quarterback, they get one more touchdown out of that and make it a 24 to 7 lead. And it's because of that one turnover that Alabama had that they spotted Tennessee. So I, I disagree. I, I disagree. I'm with Dylan. Dylan said we left 14 points on the field at half because of inaccurate passes. No, I, you left eight. That. You left eight inaccurate <laughs> passes cost you two touchdowns so turned into field right. goals. You didn't leave 14 points on the field. You left eight. So uh, eight that's points. all I'm saying. And Makes also Alabama gave you they gave you one of those field goals anyway with an unforced turnover. So y'all are Y'all are just being ridiculous right now, okay? Caleb is Alabama a Bishop is Sycamore team. homer. Who's Bishop <laughs> Sycamore? Oh, that's that fake team. That that team that uh, it was like a fake. It was I forgot. It, it's a fake college that got on ESPN. It was a fake high school that like they had like these elite athletes playing, and it wasn't a real high school. It was a big scandal. It was a hilarious scandal. Um, but look, for next year, y'all can. Uh, I'll be a Tennessee homer next year because Nico's one of the Heisman. I've been saying that from the start. Nico's winning the Heisman. Tennessee's going undefeated. And if Nico doesn't win the Heisman, you better be worried about Josh Heupel.